Good afternoon, class. This is your teacher, Miss Judy N. C. Patacia. How are you today? Welcome to PE and Health Subject, First Semester, Quarter 1, Week 4. Our most essential learning competencies are explains how to optimize the energy systems for safe and improved performance, explains the lesson that we are going to discuss this afternoon is about the folk dance of Lapay Banti. So with each passing year, customs and beliefs of groups of people get built little by little, so slowly with time forming into traditions. The folk dances represent one of the strongest ways of this. Sometimes truly ancient traditions of countries and regions can be showcased to public. So even though many traditional dances bear the name of an ethnic dance, not all of them remain folk dances but all of them try to emphasize the cultural roots of the particular dance. Some of them morphed over time into religious dances, and as such, they are not primarily used to showcase tradition, but to enhance religious ceremonies and beliefs. So such dances are often called religious or ritual dances. So dance or dancing is said to be a stress reliever. It is also a form of exercise that will help boost the immune system, through cardio exercises in the form of Zumba, Hip Hop Aero, and Dance Aerobics. So many of these dances comes in different forms and nature, and one of these is the ethnic or folk dance. So first we have the ethnic folk dance defined. So a folk dance is a dance developed by people that reflect the life of the people of a certain country or region. Not all ethnic dances are folk dances. For example, ritual dances or dances of ritual origin are not considered to be folk dances. So ritual dances are usually called religious dances because of their purpose. So the terms ethnic and traditional are used when it is required to emphasize the cultural roots of the dance. So in this sense, nearly all folk dances are ethnic dances or ethnic ones. Next, we have the Philippine folk dance. So the history of Philippine folk dancing incorporates influences from immigrants and conquerors while at the same time maintaining distinctly Filipino roots. So, Philippine folk dancing is a true reflection of daily life in past centuries while enchanting modern audiences at the same time. Next, we have the classification of Philippine folk dance. First, we have the occupational dances that depict actions of particular occupation. So, examples are the planting and the funding. Next, we have the religious eh, or ceremonials. It is associated with the religion, vows, and ceremonies. So, examples are the dugso and the suwa-suwa. Next, we have the comic dances. So, it depicts funny movements for entertainment. So, examples are the Kinotan and the Makongo. Next, we have the game dances. It is done with play elements. So, examples are the Lubi Lubi and the Pavo. Next, we have the wedding dances. So, it is performed during wedding feasts. So, example of wedding dances is Panasahan. Next, we have the courtship dances. So, it depicts the art of courtship and the examples are the Hele Hele, Tadek, and the Pantomina. 
Next, we have the festival dances. So, it is suitable for special occasions. And examples are the pandango and the habanera. And lastly, we have the war dance. So, war dance show imagery combat. So, examples are the sagayan and the palo palo. So, the folk dance title is Dilapay Bantig. So, it means seagulls of Bantig Island mas, from Masbate. And the dance culture of Dilapay Bantig is coastal Christians. And the place origin is Bantig Island, Masbate. And the ethno-linguistic group is the Masbatenyo. And the qualification is, or the classification rather, is the comic and the mimetic fall. Next, we have the background or the context of the Lapay Bantig. So, like many small islands, Bantig of Masbate relies on the sea to supply fish to great parts of the Bicol region. So, each dawn, Bantig village awaits the arrival of boats with their catch. So, gathered on the beach with the people are thousands of Lapay or seagulls flying overhead or moving around the sun and seashore. So while away with their time, people turn their attention to the lapai, showing them or imitating their flight, swoops, dives, and glides. So, so this playful frolicking started the first steps of unrehearsed dance. So music was brought in later to blend order and form. So it did not take long before couples competed in shows of lapai antiques, the very core of what lapai is today. So next, we have the costume of the Lapay Banting. So for, for the female, for the top, we have the baro. And for the skirt, we have the saya. And for the overskirt, we have the tapis. And for the male, we have the top or the camisa de chino. And for the pants, we have the colored peasant's pants rolled up just below the knee. And for the footwear, it is bare foot. So, Lapay Bantig Dance Competencies. So, the first step is the Lupad. So, flatter your arms gracefully and step sideways for 16 counts. Then, after this, face your partner and do this step again for 16 counts. Second step, we have the Kumintang. So, raise your right arm and do a horizontal thumbs up. Rotate your hand and wrist for counts. Clockwise and another four, ca four counts counterclockwise. Then, while doing this, your partner will go around you while doing the Lupad step. So, after completing each of the four counts, you and your partner will change positions, meaning your partner will do the Kumintang and you will dance around him. Third step we have the step to ka. So, while facing your partner, place the back of your palm on your forehead and do a pecking motion with your back bend. So, do this for 8 counts. Then, while still doing this step, go opposite ways, or go opposite ways. Then, you going to the front and your partner going to the back. And do this for 4 times. Next, we have the 4th step. So, you and your partner should bend and face opposite direction while stomping for 8 counts. Then, raise your arms while twirling to face your partner. Then, do this for 4 times. Next, we have the fifth step. So, move your arms in front of you up and down for 16 counts. So, then jump lightly in front of your partner and move your arms up and down in synchronization. Then do this for 16 counts too. And the last step, we have the lupad. 
So again, flatter your arms gracefully and step sideways for 16 counts. Then after this, face your partner and do this step again for 16 counts. Then pose for your final position right after. all for our lesson this afternoon. I hope you enjoy and you've learned a lot. Thank you for listening. For your activities and for your quizzes, just follow the GEITF link on your screen. Once again, good afternoon and have a good day.